Hey fellow hackers, it's JDR from uh, Dutchtronics here. Um, I'm here to show you what the 468 with some uh, modifications can do, whether it's useful or not. That's really not the issue, it's fun. Uh, what you're seeing here is the uh, Dutchtronic AVR oscilloscope clock image uh, showing on the 468 in XY mode, in analog mode. Um, it, XY mode doesn't work in digital mode. We'll get back to that later. And normally it runs on this gadget that here, that I have in my hand. But today it's running on a prototype version on the breadboard I made, and uh, that is here. And the reason for that is uh, I needed two more pins to be able to support, to add a keyboard to the clock. Well, why add a keyboard? Well, the the uh, Charnik clock has also terminal mode, but in the production version it only shows uh, images um, or letters coming in. It cannot send any characters out. So by adding the two pins, I'm able to uh, add a PS2, let me see if I can show that, PS2 keyboard here that is uh, going here into the uh, breadboard version and needs two pins to uh, be able to read the uh, characters and then it can pass it on. Um, now, why all this? Well, because I want to be able to run the uh, digital section of the 468, do something else with it, while using the analog section uh, as an XY mode display. So, just so you see what's going on, this is running in XY mode. Change it to uh, the regular sweep mode, you'll get a bunch of garbage because it's not really a repeatable sweep. But this analog mode, do it in digital, it also works. Um, it all works uh, as expected. You can uh, show things like that. Uh, no, I don't want to. Uh, time, yeah, I need to, just to get the cursor. So it's all working as expected in normal mode. Um, but I'm going to go back to analog mode, XY mode. And then I'm going to change this to a terminal mode, the uh, <coughs> clock. Here we go. Oh, the wrong button. It's always difficult. Which one do you want? All right, here we go. I'm going to clock, change the clock to terminal mode. And you can see it's running in 2400 baud. And uh, well, this is a previous image. Um, the reason I'm doing this is oops, sometimes it's a little bit uh, flaky because yeah, it's on a breadboard, it's not very stable, but it works most of the time, fine. Um, so, sometimes, um, so now it's running, sorry, in terminal mode, and it's uh, showing nothing, there's really nothing happening, because it's not connected to anything listening uh, or needs a terminal. But I modified this 468 in two ways. First, I added the serial interface, uh, and you can see the uh, red wire coming in the back from the back there that goes to the board kind of hard to see here goes here into the board and <clears throat> it um, allows me under certain conditions to uh, run uh, to interact with the 468 with the 8085 CPU using a terminal program so uh, but it's not doing that now it's running the sta still the same old scope uh, clock so the same old oscilloscope uh, firmware but if I change this to uh, here suddenly we are in the debugger and you see this uh, this is mon 85 from Dave Dunfall modified to run on the 8085 and using a serial interface that is bit bank. There's two pins on the 8085, SID and SOD, that you can use for that purpose, uh, but it has to be bit banked and does it only very slow, only 2400 baht. But that's one modification, the serial interface, and it's actually very easy to do hardware-wise. <coughs> Just four wires, um, ground, VCC, SID and SOD. Um, the one pin SOD I think is already externally uh, connected. The other pin you have to lift um, a pin from the 885 to do that. 
Okay, the other modification is that I added uh, more ROM space to the 468. The me memory map of the 468, or the 885, whatever you want to, uh, perspective you want to use, is that <clears throat> it has 16K of ROM, then 16K open space, not used, and then it starts with RAM space and the memory mapped I.O. space. Uh, but the second 16, second 16 kilobyte is totally unused. Uh, so I modified the address decoding to be able to uh, to enable that. Of course, we, as we know, with a 468, there's a lot of ROM problems. And uh, <clears throat> the Vintage Tech uh, Tectronic Museum made a very nice board to, to replace the two 8K ROMs with one chip that supports it all. And with, their, with them, I modified that board to, uh, to open up the, th the second 32, the tech second 16 kilobyte for a total of 32 kilobyte. And it's a little bit messy because you have to add five connections to the main board, um, but it's working. So that gave me 16 kilobyte more space. So what did I want to do with that? Well, I added the monitor, as you can see, this uh, an 8085 or 8080 software monitor. It supports 8085 instructions. That's interesting, although it does use them. And uh, that's that's fun. You can actually use that to debug the original code, which I've done a lot of debugging on that code, try to understand how that works. Again, that's a topic for another video if we ever do that. Um, but now I can run this monitor and I can debug the firmware. So I say uh, go. Now it's going to trace and you see that it goes into a RAM space that 8000 is the RAM space for now because to add the breakpoint which I uh, <coughs> had to do to when I hit the button hit a breakpoint uh, you need to insert in the RAM because you can modify ROM, uh, but it goes back to ROM code pretty quickly, and then return here, and then it goes to jump 1C18, and then 1C18 is the main message pump uh, in the 8085 firmware. So I'm going to turn that off again because the other thing I added besides the debugger and also the service ROM available, I had to relocate that too to make it. Uh, use a second uh, 16 kilobyte of space. But I also added the IMSI 8080 basic interpreter, an 8K basic interpreter that source code was published many, many years ago. And that's running on this <coughs> 468. So if I change the PC to 4A00, I know what that is, of course. Don't have a real good interface there. And I say go. Here we go, running basic. You have to say new every time you do something. And I don't know why that looks like the um, intensity control is not working very well. And you can see there's not much space available, uh, but enough to do some demo programs. So I'm going to type one in, and it's typing is very difficult because there's no um, there's no uh, backspace. So I have to do it very carefully. So. Bear with me, 10, 4, I don't know. I, I'll do a lowercase in this case, 4x equals 0. I modified this <laughs> basics to allow mo lowercase anyway. 2, 2 times pi, step 0 0.25, okay, that's one line. 20, print, space, of int of sine of x times 9 plus 9.5 and followed by x 30 next x 40 go to 10 list see if it, oops that's not right list I hope I got it right. Try run. Oh, a single length one. Yeah, I made a typo. Okay, so twin print space in S. I need. I missed a comma at parent. We're gonna have to do it all over again. No editing. Space of int of <coughs> sine 
of x times 9 plus 9.5 double paren okay try again look it's running a basic program showing a sign it's uh, uh, not calling it a wave a sign is function I guess on the screen and of course this will go on forever <laughs> Uh, but it's using floating point arithmetic to do this, and very impressive. This uh, IMSI basic uh, is actually not uh, Microsoft basic. It's um, interesting history that actually I don't know the history. The only thing I could find out is that it was uh, came originated in Lawrence Livermore Lab and uh, in California, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> and I know it's not the same implementation because actually I looked at the source code for Microsoft basic from those days, and it's quite different. Uh, but it's very, very similar. All right, well, this is interesting. I want to show you one more app uh, before we go. Oops, have to, uh, so now uh, here I'm going to cheat. And that is I'm going to, because uh, the next program is much longer, I'm going to move this, uh, <coughs> the serial port to my computer. Hold on. Okay, so uh, because uh, if you have a computer, use a computer terminal emulator, then you can uh, download or send a file easier. I don't have to type everything in. Just let me do that here. So uh, I have the computer interface here. Oops. Don't think it's stuck or anything. Okay, not good. Moving it here. I got it right. Okay. Let me see if that works. Oh, 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 um, you can't see, but it's actually uh, it's actually connecting and talking to me. I do send file. All right. Continuing, continuing where we left off. Um, I used my uh, computer terminal emulation program to connect to the 468, also at 2400 baht, uh, using a regular RS-232 connection. It uh, allowed me to download a program uh, from the computer without typing it all in. I uh, did that, and now I connected the serial port back to the Dutch Tronic clock, so now I can say list see what program I downloaded. Um, well, a lot of typing. This is actually the, the game of life and I'm starting to run it now. So uh, you'll see uh, what it does. Of course, uh, you know, most people have seen this game of life. So I do nine iterations. So it's going to compute the different generations of Conway's game of life. Um, but I had to uh, write a version that uses strings to store all the um, to, to store the colony basically all items all, all cells uh, <clears throat> because there's no memory on this machine as I, as you saw uh, free a couple hundred bytes left that is necessary for all the variables too and if you use regular integers every integer takes four bytes on this version of basic so you run out of space really fast um, it's going to take a while, so I'll show a couple of iterations. It's not a speed demon, this uh, version of uh, BASIC on this 8085, which runs at 2.5 megahertz, as far as I know. And <clears throat> looking at the implementation, I think the uh, MS BASIC version is a little bit more fished space-wise. I don't know about speed. I didn't do any tests, because uh, <laughs> I don't have MS BASIC running on this one. That would be quite a challenge. Um, I looked at MS Basic and basically saw cross compiled using a, originally a <coughs> digital equipment cross uh, compiled using very fancy macros. So it's not easy to uh, to compile that or assemble that. But anyway, I enjoy the running Basic. Yes, I know it's not very useful, but it's fun to see the 468 scope. Uh, having the digital and analog section running completely separate uh, tasks uh, without interacting. Just so you to prove what's going on, th this uh, 
these knobs here control by digital section which is now doing something else so I can push these and nothing will happen because it's completely ignored because the, uh, the software that monitors those buttons is just doing something else let me see how long we're gonna run this not very long um, uh, <coughs> you know there's a iteration or game of life scenarios where the same pattern repeats over and over or when it uh, dies down and I, when it dies down it will stop automatically um, but I'm gonna escape it I programmed the escape to be the interrupt character only if there's IO so I have to wait for IO here and stop okay let me see again the free only tells you how much space is available for variables not how much of that space is taken by the variables um, but list one more time and it's a string based program okay now if I want to go back to the uh, 468 function I do call zero that means just go to zero and you'll see the reboots and then going back to whatever mode it's in which is in this case XY mode to the clock back to clock and we'll have our clock back um, now to be very we can set the dial to binary mode and we'll have a real binary um, image and you can set actually the date the num to hex also and have the famous by hex clock binary hexadecimal clock okay well i hope you enjoyed this um, i'm still working on the 460s trying to uh, to play with the, the digital section and uh, enjoying it thank you